All right, so this video is for all my basketball videographers. Well, to be honest, this could also work very well for volleyball, football, baseball, anything with a ball, really. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna use basketball footage only, and by we, I mean not me. Because the other day I was scrolling through Instagram and I found this basketball reel expert who had a profile page full of crazy basketball videos with silky smooth transitions and super dynamic visual effects. So today I'm not gonna talk much, instead I'm gonna leave the floor to my new friend Horia who's gonna teach you how to recreate his style in your videos. I'm the headline, the deadline. Hey there guys, my name is Horia, I'm 25 years old and I'm a filmmaker. My work mostly consists of sports videos, especially basketball, but I also do commercials and promotional videos. Today, I will do a breakdown on how to achieve this crazy looking ball tracking effect that I used in one of my Instagram posts. Now, before we go any further, I have to tell you guys this is a pretty time consuming effect and it can get annoying at times, so just bear with me. So the first and most important step is going to be shot selection. And here are two aspects you should keep in mind. Number one, only use shots that have the ball in frame throughout the entire video. And number two, the ball position at the end of one video should be around the same as the start of the next one in order for the edit to flow seamlessly. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So here are the shots that I plan on using for this effect. And as you can see, all of them have the ball in frame throughout the entirety of the play. Now, here's what I was referring to when I was talking about ball positioning. Can you see how at the end of this video, the ball is somewhere in the center of the frame, and at the start of this next one, it's once again somewhere around the center of the frame. This is pretty important for the flow of the edit. Now, of course, the scaling is not the same, but we will worry about that later. For now, just focus on trying to keep the ball around the same area of the frame. Now for the sake of making this tutorial, I will not use all of the shots that I have right here. I will just select a few of them so that I can show you how to apply the tracking effect. So let's go with this one, this one, this one, and maybe this one. Personally, I do about 99% of my work in DaVinci Resolve, and this tracking effect can be done in Fusion, but from my personal experience, the tracker is very unreliable, so what we are going to do is export these clips and then bring them into After Effects. So what you wanna do is create a new project, open up a new composition and name it however you like. Next, select the desired resolution, frame rate and duration. Um, in my case, it will be 180 by 920 because I will export it as an Instagram reel. My preferred frame rate is 24 FPS and as far as length goes, um, I don't know, let's just do 20 seconds. You can always export just the part that you want, but yeah, for now it's okay. Next, what you wanna do is import all of your footage and drag it into the timeline. And yeah, make sure to arrange them so they're following each other. Now, as you can see, all of my shots are horizontal. And since I'm working with a vertical frame, we wanna make sure that uh, we resize it. And you will want to hold shift so that it does not mess with the um, aspect ratio. So now let's get to the actual tracking effect. What you wanna do is go to the tracker and select stabilize motion. If by any chance you don't have the tracker on the right, you wanna go up here to window and make sure tracker is checked. As you can see, the tracker has two squares. The smaller one represents the object or area that you will be tracking while the bigger one tells After Effects where to look for it. So you wanna make sure that this smaller one is just big enough to fit the ball within it, like this. And then drag the second one so that it covers the area close to it. Yeah, something like that will definitely work. Now, as you can see here in the tracker, you have um, two options, actually four, but they're pretty much the same ones, just forward and backwards. 
but you have this arrow, which is the analyze forward option, and this other one, which is analyze one frame forward. Ideally, you would just be able to press the um, analyze forward and the tracker will do all of the work for you. But unfortunately, it never quite worked right for me and it takes a pretty long time anyways. So what I recommend is doing it manually. And yeah, as you can see, it already dropped it. So let's do that again. We will use the analyze one frame forward this time. Just click it once. Okay, as we can see, it dropped the ball again, but it doesn't really matter. We will just place it manually right where it belongs. And we only need to analyze this one frame so that After Effects creates the first keyframe. After that, what we are going to use is Command right arrow on Mac or Control right arrow on Windows to move one frame forward. Of course, it's the same Command back arrow if you want to go backwards. And we will go frame by frame and place the tracker where it belongs. I will speed up this part because it's not that interesting and all you have to do is just keep tracking the ball frame by frame. Okay, now that we tracked all of the frames, what we want to do is go right back into the tracker and hit apply. Here, keep the dimensions on the X and Y axis and hit OK. Once you did that, you can notice that the ball is being tracked throughout the shot, but as the software is doing the tracking, you have a lot of the dark frame visible in the shot, as you can see right here. So go to transform right here and increase the scale to something like, let's say 125. Anywhere between 120 and 150 works. It depends on how wide your shot is. I still wanna keep the guy in the frame, so 125 works for me. Also make sure to click on this watch right here, which will keyframe the position. Now what you want to do is browse through the shot and where you see the black frame, just manually reframe it. Also, if you don't like the framing of the shot, same thing, use the position coordinates and manually place it where you would like. And here's what we have right now. You always want to make sure to double check it just to make sure that you like the framing and you don't have any of the black frame left above or below your shot. Now we are going to get to the second shot, which is this one right here. A nice dunk. What we are going to do is actually repeat the same process. Okay, so once we tracked everything, hit apply, hit OK. Now, as you can see, our first two shots are tracked. The ball is being tracked throughout the shots, but the shot does not seamlessly flow from the first video to the other one. And that's because the position of the ball is not in the same part of the frame. So now what we are going to do is match the last frame of the first clip to the first frame of the second one. And how we will do that is by actually moving the second clip one frame to the left. And on the first one, you want to go to opacity and bring it down to around 40% so that you can see both of the shots and you can place the ball exactly where you want it to be. So let's go to the second shot and we are going to drag it down and increase the scale. But first make sure to check the keyframing for the scale. Now, as we can see, the first clip ends where the second one starts and that's exactly what we want. Then you can just bring the opacity back up and move the second shot one frame to the right again. Now don't forget to bring the scale back down again to 130. If you followed all of the steps correctly, After Effects will automatically bring down the scaling. So this is what we will have. At this point, you should have two shots that are entirely tracked and flow seamlessly. Now for the sake of this video, I will also track the other two shots that I brought into the timeline, but the workflow is the exact same, so I will just fast forward over it. Okay, so now that all of the tracking is done, here's what we're left with. Last but not least, let me show you how to export your video for Instagram, TikTok, or whatever you wanna export it to. You wanna go to File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. Now right here, 
As you can see, you have a lot of settings here. And what you will want to do is go to output module and make sure it's H.264 as a format. Go to format options. And here, select the target bitrate somewhere in between 15 and 20. So let's just do 18 for this video. Click OK. The other settings should be fine, but of course you always wanna check. Now here, output two is where you tell After Effects where you want your video to be exported. So I will just export it in movies with the name Crazy Ball Tracking Effect and save. And that's about it. Congratulations for finishing this tutorial. You should now know how to create the ball tracking effect. And here's my final result. Some other stuff you could do is use keyframes to add movements like zoom ins and zoom outs. You can also export your videos into another editor and add stuff like music or sound effects but that's up to you. Before I go, I would like to also give some advice to aspiring sports filmmakers. Here are just some tips that I feel like could help you along the way. Number one, when you're starting out, try to focus more on sports that you're familiar with, or even better, sports that you actually practiced. Sports filmmaking is a lot about being able to capture little moments, um, gestures, understanding the momentum of the game, and being able to convey all of these emotions to the viewer. Some of the best people I know in this field are the ones that know the ins and outs of that specific sport very well. Number two, try to consume as much content related to that specific sport as you can. And when I say consume, I mean like really analyze it and take notes. Try to understand why. Why does that shot work? Why does that shot not work? Why did he make this certain decision in the edit and how did it impact the audience? All of these little things really matter and you should consume as much content as you can. Number three, get inspired from that content that you actually watched and analyzed. And when I say get inspired, I don't mean actually copying the whole homework from someone else. But you have to understand that when you're starting out, you will probably not have your own style. And that's perfectly normal. None of the big artists, none of the big filmmakers that you see right now had their own style when they started out. So. It's perfectly normal to copy a little thing from here, a little thing from there, and in time, as you put them all together, it will come as your own style. So don't stress that too much. Just go out and shoot. Number four, always have fun and try out as many things as you can. So for example, if you see an effect that you like, even the one that I taught you today, just go out there and try it for yourself. See how it's done, see what you can change about it, and see how you can maybe implement it in your own way. Number five, and my last tip, is to never stop learning. And now, before I go, I would like to thank all of you guys for sticking out with me throughout this whole video. Another big, big thank you goes out to Beyond the Game for allowing me this opportunity, but also for being such a good teacher and inspiring a lot of filmmakers around the world. I personally watched his videos, and I for sure will continue to do so. If you want to continue following me, my socials will be linked down below. My name is Horia, it was a pleasure being with you guys, thanks for having me, and go out there, create dope stuff. Peace. <laughs>